So to summarize, we have looked at some of the ways of looking at univariate categorical variables. So we looked at the plot function, the bar plot, and the pie chart. Then we did look at some of the multivariate plotting functions. We looked at uh, lines, how, how you add lines. Points is very similar to lines. We see how we can, we, we saw how you can add an AB line, which is of the form y is equal to a plus bx. Then we did look at the identify function where we could uh, actually click on points and see which point is it and so on. And we also looked at how legend is added to a plot. Then uh, when we came to plotting multivariate data, we looked at uh, how box plot of x as a function of y is done. In lattice, the equivalent of that is the BW plot. We looked at swine plot, we looked at bar plot with decide equal to true which gave us uh, individual bar plots within groups. Then we looked at uh, the mosaic plot, we looked at the pairs function. The s plum in lattice is actually an equivalent of pairs in, in the base graphics package. Absolutely the same. You can uh, try it yourself. Next what we are going to look at is are a couple of uh, 3D data plotting techniques. The first one that we are, so for this we are going to look at the Volcano data. So let us uh, see what is the structure of uh, Volcano data. Volcano data is actually just vector of values and if you look at the help on Volcano you'll see that it is actually a topographic information on Auckland's Mauga Vua Wow Volcano. So that is Mount Eden and it is one of the 50 active volcanoes near Auckland and this data set gives topographic information for on a 10 meter by 10 meter grid. So how you can use this data? So you have this is actually a matrix of 87 by 61. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two variables say x which is uh, 10 because it's a 10 by 10 grid 10 times 1 to n row of volcano and I'm going to say y is 10 times number of columns 1 to n call volcano so now I have two vectors which are essentially 10, 20, 30 and so on up to 870 and 610 respectively now I just adjust the margins of my plotting area so I say par margin is equal to repeat 0.54 times what it means is I'm going to essentially make all the margins very narrow the default margins are 5 on the top 4 on the bottom 2 on the left and the right or, or even on the left it is 4 and on the right it is 2 so I'm going to make them all very small now I'm going to use the function persp perspective to plot x y and z is equal to volcano I'm going to rotate that plot a bit so that it a nice side faces us so I'm going to set theta to be 120 that is the rotation and I'm going to say that it should not scale plot to fill the plot area here it is a nice looking 3d plot exactly what any geographer would like to see of a volcano or an area near the volcano now the same thing can be shown using the function contour which again takes the same data and this is how the contours have been plotted and you get to see what is the height of each of the contours contours mind you are lines of equal height so this is a line of 180 what are 180 meter height and so on now the same thing can be also done using filled contour and you actually get uh, a nice filled contours and you can get a feel of the height on a 2D projection of the three dimensional graph. Now because the margins are bad it's not showing all the labels. I can reset the margins by saying par margin is equal to C uh, bottom is 4, left is 4, top is 5, right is 2 and then I get this nice filled contour. 
so obviously the dark pink is where you have the greatest heights and the blues are where you have the least heights the next thing that I want to discuss is the function smooth scatter this is turning out to be more or less a random uh, collection of things that you can do plots that you can make so let's look at smooth scatter the reason I am discussing this is because you may want to plot a large number of data points and then your scatter plot with filled disks etc really becomes just a blob on the plotting area you want to some way convey the areas of higher density in your data so smooth scatter takes care of that uh, before I do this let me just create a vector x which is say random normal variate or say 1 million points and let my y be say x plus again r norm but uh, possibly with a standard deviation of 0.5 now if I have a smooth scatter of y as a function of x let us see what happens a beautiful linear relationship can be seen the denser area has been shown in dark blue less dense area as you go away from the mean can be seen in light blue and then some outlying points have also been shown here as very sparse very tiny specks on this plotting area so those could actually get treated as outliers before treating them as or identifying them as outliers on the smooth scatter plot one should always remember that this these points are now coming from a very large sample size and therefore they are distinct possibility so your cutoff limits etc should be appropriately adjusted before you identify the outliers now what we are going to look at are a couple of things that one can do to customize your plots we have already looked at how you can adjust the margins of a plot so there is this underlying function par which is the plotting area which is where a lot of uh, preliminary work of preparing the plotting area is done and in that we had for example reset the margins now let us look at a couple of other things that we can do the par function is actually function with a huge number of arguments and you should read it very carefully try to remember what all can be done and a hell lot can be done so the first thing that I'm going to now show is how you can actually create two graphs on the same plotting area this can be done using the argument mf row make a frame row wise with two rows and one column so what you're going to get is essentially two graphs one below the other and let me plot simply histogram of reverse maybe I'll add legend equal to true color is equal to blue and labels and the next thing that I'm going to do is add box plot of reverse color is equal to say yellow 